Today we'll be making a ball destroyer cube. Make sure self fractures enabled in Blender add-ons. Set up the scene, move the cube so it sits on the ground, add lights, the floor, and align the camera. Select the cube, go to Object, Quick Effects, Cell Fracture. Own Verse Space Fracture off vertices, one block per vertex. Child Verse are based off other objects. Own and Child Particles use a particle system in the volume. Annotation Pencil uses the Grease Pencil to decide where fractures appear. Shift clicking lets you select multiple systems. So you can use the annotation to create the main fracture, but the parts will still be fractured using another system. Source limit controls the amount of parts, zero for infinite. Noise controls randomness. Recursive fracture will run the effect on smaller parts, not really useful. You can get more control by fracturing, selecting a piece, and fracturing again. Mesh data is self-explanatory. Material offset can be used to make the inside a different material. Make note of the margin. Collection will put the shards into the named collection. If there isn't one, Blender will create one. Draw a brick with the annotation. Make sure it's set to surface. Then in the settings, set noise to 1, custom collection. Select one object. Enable rigid body physics. You don't need to touch anything except maybe the friction and bounciness. It should fall through everything. To apply physics to everything else, select the object you applied physics to, shift select everything else, and go to Object, Rigid Body, Copy from Object. If you play the animation, the cube will fall through the floor, because the plane doesn't have physics, dummy. Give it Rigid Body Physics, turn off dynamic so it won't fall. For some extra realism, there are two settings. The mass is currently all identical, so go to Object, Rigid Body, Calculate Mass. And we have Mass based on Volume. In the Scene tab, we can choose Simulation Time. The box is 2 meters squared. Very big, you probably thought it was smaller. To make it seem smaller, speed up the simulation. It's faster to follow a smaller distance. You could also slow down a miniature. Finally, the object breaks apart immediately. We want it to break when something hits it, like the Rest option in 3ds Max. To do this, go to the bottom of the Physics tab. You will find the Deactivation setting. Activate it, and the options Activate Start Deactivated. Apply on everything else and recalculate mass. The box won't move until something touches it. If your box is deactivated yet still collapses, delete the ground and reset it. Then set Type to Passive. Create a Physics object to destroy the cube. I chose a sphere. Move it away. Hover over and press I to keyframe location and animate it. Move a few frames forwards, move the object closer, keyframe location, then one frame forward and deactivate animate it. The reason why we add a keyframe before the deactivation keyframe is because for some reason the animation state is a linear threshold. If you don't add it, the animation will stop at the halfway point. The ball slows before contact, reducing velocity. Go to the graph editor, select the lines and set interpolation to linear. If you want, you can bake animation in the scene tab. Baking means the movement is recorded and it won't change until you delete it. If you don't want cracks, start by selecting one object. Go to frame 1, deactivate render visibility, keyframe it, then move to right before contact and re-enable render visibility. To transfer it, select everything else, then select the object with the keyframes and press Ctrl L animation data. Obviously, you can reverse this and make the original box invisible on contact. 